Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So I recall my first time buying rubbers, I was 16 or so. I went in to buy a package of condoms. There was a beautiful woman behind the counter, and she could see that I was new at it. She handed me the package and asked if I knew how to wear one. I honestly answered, no. So she unwrapped the package, took one out, and slipped over her thumb. She cautioned me to make sure it was on tight and secure. I apparently still looked confused, so she looked all around the store. It was empty. Just a minute, she said, and walked to the door and locked it. Taking my hand, she led me into the back room, unbuttoned her blouse, and removed it. She unhooked her bra and laid it aside. Do these excite you? She asked. Well, I was so dumbstruck that all I could do was nod my head. She then said, it was time to slip the condom on. As I was slipping it on, she dropped her skirt, removed her panties, and laid down on a desk. Well, come on, she said. We don't have much time. So I climbed on her. It was so wonderful that unfortunately, I could no longer hold back and I was done within a few minutes. She looked at me with a frown. Did you put that rubber on? I said, I sure did, and held up my thumb to show her. <laughs> so a woman and her boyfriend are out having a few drinks. While they're sitting there having a good time together, she starts talking about this really great new drink. The more she talks about it, the more excited she gets and starts trying to talk her boyfriend into having one. After a while, he gives in and lets her order the drink for him. The bartender brings the drink and puts the following items on the bar. A salt shaker, a shot of Bailey's, and a shot of lime juice. The boyfriend looks at the items quizzically and the woman explains. First, you put a bit of the salt on your tongue. Next, you drink the shot of Bailey's and hold it in your mouth. And finally, you slam the lime juice. So, the boyfriend, trying to go along and please her, goes for it. He puts the salt on his tongue, salty but okay. He drinks the shot of Bailey's, smooth, rich, cool, very pleasant. He thinks, this is okay. Finally, he picks up the lime juice and slams it. In one second, the sharp lime taste hits. At two seconds, the Bailey's curdles. At three seconds, the salty, curdled taste and mucus-like consistency hits. At four seconds, it feels as if he has a mouth full of nasty snot. This triggers his gag reflex, but being manly and not wanting to disappoint his girlfriend, he swallows the now foul-tasting drink. When he finally chokes it down, he turns to his girlfriend and says, Holy crap, what do you call that drink? She smiles angelically at him and says, Blowjob revenge. <laughs> so at Friday night services, Morris asks his friend Irving, I need a favor. I'm sleeping with the rabbi's wife. Can you hold him in synagogue for an hour after services for me? Irving is not very fond of the idea, but being Morris' lifelong friend, he reluctantly agrees. After services, he strikes up a conversation with the rabbi, asking him all sorts of stupid questions just to keep him occupied. After some time, the wise rabbi becomes suspicious and asks, Irving, what are you really up to? Irving, filled with feelings of guilt and remorse, confesses to the rabbi. I'm sorry, Rabbi. My friend is sleeping with your wife right now, so he asked me to keep you occupied. The rabbi smiles, puts a brotherly hand on Irving's shoulder and says, You better hurry home, Irving. My wife died two years ago. <laughs> so a woman gets on a city bus. She looks at the driver and holds up one hand. The driver holds up two hands. Next, the woman points up 
The driver points down. Then, the woman grabs her breast. The driver grabs his crotch. Finally, the woman grabs her butt and gets off the bus. A curious passenger asks the bus driver what the odd motions were all about. The driver explained, the woman is a deaf mute. She asked me if a bus ride is five cents, and I told her it was ten cents. Next, she asked if the bus was going uptown, and I told her it was going downtown. Then, she asked if the bus was going past the dairy, and I told her it was going past the ballpark. The passenger interjected, Okay, but why did she grab her butt as she left the bus? The driver continued. She replied, Oh, shit. I'm on the wrong bus. <laughs> so, it was a hot Saturday evening in the summer of 1960, and Fred had a date with Peggy Sue. He arrived at her house and rang the bell. Oh, hi Fred, come on in, Peggy Sue's mother said as she welcomed him. Have a seat in the living room. Would you like something to drink? Lemonade? Iced tea? Iced tea, please, Fred said. Mom brought the iced tea. So, what are you and Peggy planning to do tonight? She asked. Oh, probably catch a movie. Then maybe grab a bite to eat at the malt shop and maybe take a walk on the beach. Peggy likes to screw. You know, Mom informed him. Really? Fred asked with raised eyebrows. Oh yes, the mother continued. When she goes out with her friends, that's all they do. Is that so? Asked Fred, incredulous. Yes, said the mother. As a matter of fact, she'd screw all night if we let her. Well, thanks for the tip, Fred said as he began thinking about alternate plans for the evening. A moment later, Peggy Sue came down the stairs, looking pretty as a picture wearing a pink blouse and a hoop skirt and with her hair tied back in a bouncy ponytail. She greeted Fred. Have fun, kids, the mother said as they left. Half an hour later, a completely disheveled Peggy Sue burst into the house in tears and slammed the front door behind her. Twist, mom, she angrily yelled to her mother in the kitchen. The twist, damn it. It's called the twist. <laughs> so Batman and Robin are sitting at the bar. Robin looks up and sees Superman walking in, but he's all beat to rat shit. Torn cape, black eyes, limping. Robin says, Jesus, Superman, what happened to you? Superman says, well, I was flying over the city and looked down and saw Wonder Woman sunbathing naked. She had her eyes closed and her legs open, so I pulled out my thing and flew down to screw her. Robin says, damn, I bet she was surprised. Superman says, yeah, but not half as surprised as the Invisible Man. <laughs> so while I was taking a crap today, I got a brilliant idea how to save airline business. First, we should dump the male flight attendants. No one wanted them in the first place. Replace all the female flight attendants with good-looking strippers. What the hell? They don't even serve food anymore. So what's the loss? The strippers would at least triple the alcohol sales and get a party atmosphere going in the cabin. And, of course, every businessman in this country would start flying again, hoping to see naked women. Because of the tips, female flight attendants wouldn't need a salary, thus saving even more money. I suspect tips would be so good that we could charge the women for working the plane and have them kick back 20% of the tips, including lap dances and special services. Muslims would be afraid to get on the planes for fear of seeing naked women. Hijackings would come to a screeching halt, and the airline industry would see record revenues. This is definitely a win-win situation if we handle it right, a golden opportunity to turn a liability into an asset. <laughs> so a crusty old Royal Marine Sergeant Major 
found himself at a gala event hosted by a local liberal arts college. There was no shortage of young, extremely idealistic ladies in attendance, one of whom approached the sergeant major for conversation. Excuse me, sergeant major, but you seem to be a very serious man. Is something bothering you? Negative, miss. Just serious by nature. The young lady looked at his awards and decorations and said, It looks like you have seen a lot of action. Yes, miss, a lot of action. The young lady, tiring of trying to start up a conversation, said, You know, you should lighten up a little. Relax and enjoy yourself. The sergeant major just stared at her in his serious manner. Finally, the young lady said, You know, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But when is the last time you made love? 1955, miss. Well, there you are. You really need to chill out and stop taking everything so seriously. I mean, no love since 1955. She took his hand and led him to a private room where she proceeded to relax him several times. Afterwards, panting for breath, she leaned against his bare chest and said, Wow, you certainly haven't forgotten much since 1955. The sergeant major, glancing at his watch, said in his serious voice, I hope not. It's only 2130 now. <laughs> so a burglar broke into a house one night. He shined his flashlight around, looking for valuables and when he picked up a CD player to place in his sack, a strange disembodied voice echoed from the dark saying, Jesus is watching you. He nearly jumped out of his skin, clicked his flashlight off, and froze. When he heard nothing more after a bit, he shook his head and continued. Just as he pulled the stereo out so he could disconnect the wires, clear as a bell he heard, Jesus is watching you. Freaked out, he shined his light around frantically, looking for the source of the voice. Finally, in the corner of the room, his flashlight beam came to rest on a parrot. Did you say that? He hissed at the parrot. Yep, the parrot confessed, then squawked. I'm just trying to warn you. The burglar relaxed. Warn me, huh? Who in the world are you? Moses, replied the bird. Moses, the burger laughed. What kind of people would name a bird Moses? The bird giggled and said, the same kind of people that would name a Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs>